Welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at the Permobile retractable joystick mount, aka swing away is what everyone else calls it. Very similar to this sort of setup here. I'm actually sitting in the C300 right now. In a previous video, <laughs> we took apart this older style swing away mount. If I can find the footage of that, I'll, uh, well, I'll just put a link to that video above and down below. But this one has a couple of chains inside of it and the top cover is plastic and it actually seems to be fairly solid. There's a little bit of movement, but they have this knob down here that allows you to adjust the amount of tension that this thing has. Now on this one, the plastic housing kind of broke, so I'm just kind of holding it on there with electrical tape. But the new style one has a screw back here instead of a knob, and the overall profile of this thing is a lot shorter. Well, here, I'll just show you. Here we have my 2021 F3, and this one came with the new style one. See how much thinner this is? I believe, I think this cover is now metal, but instead of having a knob back here, there is one Allen bolt. When these things first came out, I wasn't sure right off how strong they would be. It's done all right so far. The main thing I wanted to check out today though was this amount of movement right here. You can kind of see that wobbling a little bit. It's gotten just bad enough that it makes me think there's gotta be some sort of adjustment or something in here. There's no visible screws or anything on the bottom of the front of this. And also it's completely dark, so it's hard to see. But I really feel like there should be a way to take up this little bit of slack that has appeared over the last year. And if you look real close, pardon all the dust and dirt, it doesn't matter how clean you keep your chair. If you zoom in far enough, you're gonna see dirt and stuff on it. But if you notice right here, you can see that it's actually, the movement is happening between this and the joystick itself. This whole bar wiggles just a little bit, but a majority of it is up here. So I was thinking this would be a perfect time to take this thing apart and see how it works inside because I have not yet taken one apart and, well, you know what they say about assuming. It means you don't know. So let's find out. By the way, that's an old MacBook Air back there that is getting the Ubuntu treatment right now. So anyways, if you see that in the background, that's what's going on there. So on this chair, I've got the armbar conversion kit that allows you to put the waterfall or other style of armrests on here. I can't think of the name that they call this right off, but basically it gets rid of these giant flat stock armrests, which on this chair are cracking for no reason, and allows you to put on something else that's not quite as wide. Because in my case, having the super wide armrests on here was not doing me any favors. As far as being able to get through doorways and whatnot, and also, they were wide enough that I couldn't get into the proper driving position on my van. So anyways, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and pull this thing off of here and leave all the uh, electronics and stuff, or the joystick just kind of laying on the chair. So we're gonna pull these screws out of here real quick. And then there's a cable clip here on the bottom. There's the, there's the cable clip. When my dealer gave me this armbar kit because they forgot to... Oh, my phone's ringing. Weird. Nah. It was a robot dial, but it wasn't spam. Anyways, I forget what I was saying. Oh yeah, so the DME forgot to put this kit on my chair when I got it originally. And they just wound up shipping me the parts. And we didn't get the proper interface to connect the swing away to these arm bars, so I just kind of had to fabric cobble something together. It's not working well enough for now. I would like to change this though because I like to run around with my joystick tilted in. I'm, I'm accentuating so you can see, but I like to have my joystick tilted in like this, but unfortunately it's not possible with how I had to set up this bracket. So you can hold all this with one hand without it crashing to the floor. Maybe. Aha! There it is. Ta-da! We have a thing. I think typically this part right here is facing backwards. I think I had to take that apart and rotate it sideways to get my, um, uh, to get it mounted. But as you can see here, as this thing turns, it keeps this facing the same direction. Now Quantum, for example, they use a belt inside this and they have a ton of problems with that, like stripping out and whatnot. And to my ear, that kind of sounds like metal. Yeah, there's the bottom of it. We've got a metal case on the bottom, 
four screws, one on each corner. Let me get my lap desk and we'll set this up, take it apart and see what's going on inside and see if there is a way, actually, can we even, yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. There's just a little, a little bit of movement there. It doesn't take much to amplify that movement through a giant joystick, which weighs something and creates a giant lever. Yeah, it looks like the whole mechanism is moving, not just like that screw being loose there. Okay, I'll be right back. Since I'm using the C300 today, it's uh, takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm just gonna run my seat elevator up here so my lap desk is level with the desk. There we are. I think I've got some light up here. Oh, come on light, turn on. There we go. Ta-da, it's a thing. My hands are a little bit blown out, but at least you can see this thing. Get our Harbor Freight T-handle wrenches. In theory, all we need to do is pop out these four screws, which apparently are 1 8 inch. Well, according to the Harbor Freight sizing, Harbor Freight Allen keys are notoriously not 100% correct when it comes to sizes. However, it is sometimes very handy. Uh, yeah, that's not the right size. Let's go back to the three millimeter. Yeah, anyways, sometimes it's actually really handy to have slightly improperly sized Allen keys because in the real world, while fasteners are supposed to be a proper size. Oh, we've got some Loctite in there. I think you can see that the actual sizes of things are going to be different and it's super handy to have wrenches that are not quite standard sizes. I'm sure we've all taken something apart and a metric wrench doesn't quite fit and a standard wrench also doesn't quite fit Inter Harbor Freight and their weird sizes. Usually you can get one that'll fit perfect. Okay, are you ready to see what secrets are inside? I don't know if I have to take these off, but we'll try and see here. Oh, yep. Got to pull off the uh, the mounts here. Let's try a 530 seconds. Yeah, looks about right. Oh, of course, of course it's going to try and turn these as I do it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, those are tight. Um, need some sort of holding device. Let's see if I can make one appear using the pick stick. I was going to try and do this all while I was sitting in the chair, but then realized that probably wasn't the best idea. And I had this C300 just sitting over there in the corner. So we'll, uh, we'll just do one of these. Actually, let's loosen this one first. There we go. <laughs> uh, oh, I wonder if this whole thing is going to go sprueing. I'm going to put a mark on here with a Sharpie that tells me the end where the joystick is at because I don't want to get confused later. Yeah, this all appears to be spring-loaded or something. They use these little engagement teeth here on both pieces to make sure once you tighten it down, it doesn't rotate. So you can see the, the teeth there on both of those. Oh, there's a little arrow on there. I think you can see that. carefully set this down so we have sort of a pot metal uh, yeah it's sort of a pot metal casting here and this thing that's about to try and fly away is our spring tension mechanism <laughs> that holds these two halves together it's got a little bit of grease in here Let's see if we can pull this out so we've got this thing here with a spring in the middle and some wheels on each end. 
and that provides tension along this track and it's held in place with the track on top here to push these things tight. Now what I'm noticing right away is I don't see any adjustment on this. So I think that wobbly movement I'm just going to have to live with. We've got this piece here and this surface is machined to just fit into this hole right here. And this just fits right in here. So any movement that we get is going to come down to the tolerances on this surface, this surface, and on the top here, how much clamping load there is pushing down on it. Can't quite tell if these are oil light bushings or what these are. Ah, oh, looks like they come out. Hopefully I'm not breaking this. Yeah, there we go. Here's our, our little bushing thing. Yeah, that's not metal. It's not bronze. It's got sort of a brown color to it. But that goes on here and provides stability. And it appears to be the same thing as what's down here. And then we just have the bottom of this metal piece here. So there's no adjustment to this. In theory, if you've got a bunch of wobbling going on, you'd probably have to replace these things. Huh. So this is a very simple design as opposed to the old style one. Let me see if I can pull up that footage and I'll show you a quick difference between the two. Yeah, check it out. So we've got a couple of shafts here that have teeth and then we have this chain. I think the idea here uh, with this thickness is to keep the torsional bending like this so it doesn't bow to a minimum. So on the bottom side here, th this is where you adjust the tension and turning this screw goes through here. As you can see, this one turns freely, but this one takes a lot of force and that force is adjustable here. I was thinking for a minute, maybe we could get another one of these and move one up here, but then this hole would have to be cut out for that to work. So it would appear as though this is what we got. Huh. There is a little tiny, a little tiny pinhole right there. I'm almost wondering, these both appear to be the same and they're threaded in the middle. I'm wondering now if I could drill a hole in this and run a bolt through here, use like a um, uh, pulley washer or something here and use that to tension this. I think that might be a viable way to do that. We do have one tooth missing here and I wasn't really paying attention when I took this apart. Um, but yeah, there we go. This is basically the, the whole setup. Um, actually, this would make a great thumbnail picture. Let me, let me get a picture of this real quick. Well, I guess that's it. Not really too much else to show here. I don't feel like trying to modify this thing right now. So I'm just going to live with that little bit of wobbling that's there. Actually, let's, uh, let me set this back in here. So with this just set back in here and none of the other parts in, you can see that the tolerances appear to be pretty good. But when you get a joystick hanging on there and the 200 pound gorilla pounding on the joystick, it, uh, any little bits of movement are going to get amplified. So I don't think trying to clamp these two halves together are going to benefit us in any way. I guess I'm just going to rock it for now. And if it gets worse at some point in the future, I'll probably do the mod where I drill a hole here and get another one of these screws and do that. So anyways, uh, I guess we'll put this thing back together. Yeah, we've got a couple of teeth missing on each side and I was not paying attention when I took this apart. So we may have to put this back together a couple of times. Oh, I see now. I see what's going on. Okay, glad I looked. So here's our gear. We have that tooth missing. And then we have these little wheels. There is a detent right here. 
and that is designed to interface with this little wheel. So for example, when you swing your joystick, it kind of latches into place. It takes a little bit of resistance to move, then it moves freely, and then it snaps into place. So that's what those little, uh, little detents are for. Which means, putting this back together, all we gotta do is point these two notches with the gears missing at each other. If I can turn this, there we go. So that points there, that points there. Then our little springy mechanism here slides in. Oh man, this is quite fiddly. Line that up just right. There we go. Oh, that spring is tight. Come on. Doesn't help that everything's covered in grease, too. Okay, now you should be able to see that that little wheel is interfaced with where the notch is on each end here. And when we put the cover back on this, it's going to press this down and basically put our tension on everything. That's why this thing felt like it was spring-loaded when I was taking it apart, because it basically was. So, if you take these things apart, you gotta be careful. Ow! So if you take these apart, you gotta be careful of that. Um, some of the grease is now on my hands, but I think we're good to put this back together. We've got our little bushings in here and they look fine. So, let's just go ahead. Where's that, where that napkin go? So, we'll just carefully push that down making sure these pop into place like they should. Hold this together, then put some of our screws back in, which were this size. Okay, that should hold it just for now. Then we'll get the rest of our pieces lined up here. Now once again, in my case, this part here that's sticking up is gonna face that way, straight back. Well, here, I'll just show you. On your chair, nine times out of 10, it's gonna look like this when you put it back together. But in my case, I had to rotate this because of how I have everything mounted. I'm gonna double check and make sure our teeth are engaged before we tighten it down. Just snug these up real quick. And get the rest of our screws put in the back here. And try with the metric one because that felt a little loose. Yeah. Yeah, see, even some of these screws here will fit metric and not standard. So once again, I like having the the odd sized ones so we can get everything nice and tight. So I'm just torquing these down by hand here. I'm not going too insane because you can strip all this out, but there's kind of a feel to getting that stuff tight. Then we'll reapply our mech pliers. Actually tighten this one first. Get that good and snug. Same with this one. And we are good to go. Our chain is now doing its work and keeping this facing the same direction no matter what orientation it's in and our detent is working. You can even hear it. Kind of clicks into place. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna put this back on the chair. We have six minutes left on the battery. Let's see if we can do this real quick. <laughs> Getting this back together, we've got our ICS box, which is on a little plate that gets sandwiched between the mount and the joystick. It's kind of a handful getting all this stuff started. So usually just get one in there. Then feed the other one in. And I don't worry about lining all this up until I get them most of the way run down in there. I'll just kind of line these up by eye right now. It's not super critical. Once I get this mounted on the chair, I can loosen these back up and adjust them if they're a little bit crooked or whatever. So we're just gonna gently cinch these down for now. There we go. 
Then we've got our screws that mount on here. Work with my hands. Ah, no, don't drop it. Come on. Okay, good enough for now. Looks like it swings back and forth just fine. We do, we do still have our motion here, but once again, can't really do anything about that. I'm going to gently loosen these screws on the back here and show you what I'm talking about for alignment. Okay, with those two screws loose, you can see now, well, maybe you can. Well, I didn't loosen them enough, but if you get to this point and your joystick is not in line, those two screws on the bottom, these ones right here, you can loosen those up usually and adjust the the angle of this a little bit if it's not straight. But I think for me right now, that appears to be just fine. And in my opinion, it would actually be preferable to put a little tiny, tiny bit of blue Loctite, the not the permanent stuff, but the blue, which is medium strength, on these screws. Because I found over time, just running around and driving your chair and whatnot, these can work loose. And these are very tiny Allen head screws, and it's really hard to get them tight enough without damaging them, even when using the right size Allen key. So a tiniest bit of Loctite on there would probably be good. And I just mean like a half of a drop, because if these things get locked in here too hard, there's no way you're going to get them out without rounding out these uh, these heads on here. So, oh, I guess we need to put our wire clamp on here too. It's essentially just a little plastic clip here with a screw and there's two spots on this. You can see one hole right here and another one right here. If things were done correctly, your ICS wire and your joystick wire should each get their own little slot there. Then when you tighten that down, this little tab here, it's hard to see, but there's a little groove that that will latch into. And you don't want to go too crazy tight on that because it's plastic and everything. But now you can see as we tilt the joystick, our wiring doesn't interfere with anything. And it depends on the chair and the person and everything because, like I said, these are not the stock armrests. So in my case, having this come up over the end here allows us to flex both directions and not interfere. Sometimes this does interfere with the seat belt in my van, but I just have to be careful. And this loops over here with enough space to get your finger in there. And once again, that just allows for movement in both directions. And I think you can see our detent there, maybe. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna tighten down this bolt just a little bit though, because I want a tiny bit more tension. And it doesn't take much torque on this at all um, to adjust the amount of friction. There we go, that seems a little bit tighter now. I wasn't recording. Was it that whole time? So anyways, there you go. There's a brief look at the new Permobile retractable joystick mount, as they call it, or swing away, as all the manufacturers call it. I am really curious though, if you've got a chair with this new style slim mount on it, have you had any issues with it? Have you had to have it replaced? Or has it been perfect and nothing has been wrong? Just looking at this one, I mean, I've got probably seven, 800 miles on this chair now and I've been using it for probably about a year and a half and just that little bit of play has developed. I did notice a tiny bit when I first got the chair, so I'm curious. I, I always like to know the failure mode of these things. When you're designing a product, you can only get stuff tested and built to a certain level, but until it gets out in the wild and everyone starts using it, you don't really know what the failure points are gonna be. So if you have one of these chairs, let me know if you've noticed that wobbliness of the joystick, or even if you care, I don't know. I will say this is a lot better than the Quantum version. Theirs has a rubber belt in it and they strip out and break almost instantly. I never had a problem with these older style ones. They do have a little bit more adjustability and you can actually adjust the chain tension as opposed to the new one that's just set by a couple of plastic pieces and a spring. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts about those things down below. Uh, I will see you guys on the live stream tomorrow which is going to be here on the bus because <laughs> the weather alerts here are hilarious. Nobody understands what actual weather is. It said, warning, severe weather alert, up to one inch of snow and up to one-tenth of an inch of ice. 
But it might get down to single digits tonight, so I think we're going to be streaming in here tomorrow, because um, driving on roads with people that are worried about one inch of snow and a tenth of an inch of ice is probably not something I want to do. So anyways, thanks for watching. Discuss down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.